Hi, welcome to the Advanced Playwriting Showcase. I'm Aaron Hahn, playwriting teacher and artist in residence. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce these wonderful plays written by the um, Advanced Playwriting class. Um, it's also been my pleasure to work with this class for the past four years. Uh, we've we've done some really excellent work together over that time, and um, it's just it's been a, a lot of fun. Um, I'm sorry to see them go. Uh, these plays uh, have been developed throughout uh, the semester. Um, you know, I know this has been a difficult year for everyone, but um, they've really come through and done some fantastic work and uh, created these these excellent plays that I'm really proud of, and um, I'm happy to share with you. So thank you again for coming, and please enjoy the show. Is it on? Yes. Shh. Sorry. <clears throat> Hi, KQED. This is our submission for your series on small businesses. We are the Martinez Hat Company, one of the last hat shops in the world that still uses the old mystical ways of fine hat cultivation. We are located down on 1337 Fourth Street, and the store is open from 10 to 7 on weekdays and 11 to 8 on weekends. Welcome to A Day in the Life. We always start the day with a fresh cup of coffee and a look at our latest shipments. Ooh, these are grade A newsboy caps from our friends up in Sergei's Hat Farm in Slovakia. They are limited edition, so make sure to get yours before it's too late. Uh, wait, what am I supposed to say here? The question. Right, sorry. <clears throat> what attracted you to your trade and how did it turn into a business? Well, I learned the noble art of hat hunting from my grandmother. <laughs> hunting is a bit of a misnomer. Really, it's more like uh, exploration. She taught me how to climb the highest, most treacherous mountains to find the fedora orchids on their peaks, how to dive to the darkest depths of the sea to find berets and the trenches, and how to sail even in the stormiest of weather in search of the rarest bucket hat forest on Lost Islands. So... It's a bit of a funny story, but um, while my partner here specialized in the art of tracking down wild-grown hats, I was raised to cultivate them. As a child, I learned to water the trees with the finest malted whiskey and prune their leaves and read them bedtime stories. Hats are temperamental, you see, and it takes a careful hand to grow them. A while back, I noticed the hats in my inventory had been disappearing, so one night I stayed behind to see if I could catch the thief. I was just beginning to doze off when I was startled by a sudden crash and the most beautiful creature I had ever seen, <laughs> broke into the warehouse and began to pluck hats from my orchard. I ran to confront them and a bit of homoerotic stabbing went on and that's how we knew it was true love. <laughs> well, we married shortly thereafter and took mm -hmm. over the shop as a wedding gift from my grandmother. Happiest day of my life. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> oh shit, uh, we got a customer. Should we turn this off? It's fine, we'll edit this stuff out later. Uh, he looks like a weirdo. He looks like the kind of guy who would wear berets, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, sir. How can we help you? Oh, I, I'm just browsing. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Not really. That's a lovely briefcase. What's in it? Oh, it's just papers. It seems a little large for just papers. I'm a businessman. Oh, what's your business? I, uh, well, uh... Babe, the man's entitled to his privacy. Sir, I think we've got a lovely beret that will match it nicely. You seem like a beret kind of a guy. Why, thank you. Oh, try this one. Oh, it's spectacular. I haven't seen quality like this in quite a long time. Oh, are you involved in the old hat industry? I was once, back in the old country. What happened? Well, I was a different man back then. Times change, things happen. People will betray you. Hats will always have a special place in my heart, but I'm afraid things will never be how they used it. I have the utmost respect for your commitment to a dying way of life. Dying? It's not dying. I'm afraid it is, and you both know it. Well, we're going to put a stop to that. We're recording a podcast to submit to the radio station, and I just know that if people heard about this beautiful way of life, they'd come flooding to hat shops all over. When are you doing this recording? Oh, right now, right now, actually. What?! Turn it off now! Whoa, 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 calm down. We'll let this part out. No, I, I beg of you, do not let this recording end. There, there, there are people, awful people, who might hear you. Shop and try to destroy all your whole dear hatsmen everywhere are depending on you. What? Shit, they've probably already found the place. You, you must close up the store for a day. Do not let anyone in. 
Why not? It's best if you don't know. Where are you going? I- I'll-, I'll be back. I need to dispose of this briefcase. It contains the last remnants of this beautiful dying world. If it reaches the wrong hands, well, I shudder to think of what might happen. D- should we call the police? <laughs> Darling, you know how we feel about cops. But he might need some kind of help. He's a businessman. That sort of thing sounds like business, which I'm sure he's qualified to do. All right. If you're sure, shall we keep doing the podcast? Yeah. Uh, So the next question is, what values influence the way you run your business? Hmm. I think we are both very community orientated, which Mm -hmm. is why 10% of our proceeds go towards stocking the community fridge in our town. We also value authenticity and tradition. So... Where is he? Jesus! I do not care about Jesus. I am looking for Nikolai Obolinsky, that pathetic rat-faced sack of shit. I know he was here. Tell me! How dare you! I am the only one allowed to homoerotically fight my partner. Oh, my apologies. Listen, the man I am looking for is dangerous. You are one of the less traditional headshots, yes? Yes. So you should be familiar with... The lost bowler hats of St. Petersburg. Yes, my grandmother spoke of them often, but I thought they were just fairy tales. As did I. However, I came across some of the ancient texts of the old Russian hat farmers and found evidence of their whereabouts. I had to travel the globe to track them down, and that bastard robbed them of me. He is threatening to destroy them, and then they will truly become nothing more than an old wives' tale told to little children who are just learning to water their first peony plants. Good heavens! So, so I implore you, if you have any idea where I might find Nikolai, please, please tell me. Well, a man was in here a minute ago. He had a briefcase and said he intended to dispose of it. So he's close by? I think so. Good, good. Are you planning to hurt him? Oh, no, no, of, of course not. We are not violent people. Vlad, Dmitri and I are just going to have a little talk with him. Well, what's that thing in your friend's pocket? Well, Vlad has a little fidget toy, like a security blanket. His anxiety has been acting up lately. Aha! Boys, grab him! No! You really thought you could escape me? Me, Zoya the Laurentless, who's killed dozens of men simply for breathing in my direction? Now, you will show me where you've hidden the bowlers. Never. Your reign of terror has lasted for too long. These hats are sacred. They are not for you. They are not for any humans. They are not meant to be possessed. They are not meant that they exist free from the hands of humanity. Oh, haven't you heard? I always get what I want, and what I want is to find every last bowler hat and burn them. Burn them all. Burn them? (laughs) Stupid Americans. All I have ever wanted was to destroy those godforsaken hats. But why? They just, they look so fucking stupid. I hate them. I, I hate them. Give them to me. I'd sooner die than let a monster like you get your hands on them. Then die you shall. Vled, do the honors. Yes, boss. <gasps> That's really some fissure toy. Uh, uh, no! Uh, uh, shit! Uh, shit! What do I do? Um, uh, maybe try putting pressure on it. Uh, it's not working! Oh god, oh yeah. god. We need to pull the knife out. No! That's disgusting! I can't. I'll do it, damn it! Oh, I think he's dead. Pity. I liked him. (laughs) No, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. You tell me where the hats are and I'll let you live. Well, uh, I'm afraid we can't let you do that. Oh, you should be afraid. (laughs) Well, you see... Hats are a passion. We've devoted our lives to their care. You threaten to upset the balance between hats and humans. <laughs> well, we just can't have that. Are those bowler hats on your shelf? <laughs> um, Miss, why don't you just leave our establishment? We'll take care of the body for you. Just be on your way. Think of it as a gift. Why, you conniving bastards! Give them to me! Uh, 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 no! Babe, what was that? It was an accident! Hands above your heads! The recording ends at this point.
The FBI took Scissors and Thursday Martinez into custody, and they are currently imprisoned in an international stronghold awaiting trial for mass murder as well as various war crimes in relation to the Great Russian Hat Mafia. Alas, the location of the lost bowler hats of St. Petersburg remains a mystery. This has been True Crime Stories of the Villainous with James Foster. See you next week. Hello? Hi, I'm Trish, a volunteer with the Pennsylvania Democrats. Are you planning on voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris this year? Oh my god, I never thought I would get cell service up here. Oh? Yeah, I'm in a hot air balloon right now. You're going up in a hot air balloon, and up is where the economy will go if you help elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Huh? I, I was just wondering if you're going to vote for Joe Biden. <laughs> will Joe Biden help me with my proposal, you know? Well, he might not be able to do that, but his immigration plan is much more compassionate. Imagine if you and your fiancé... Future fiancé, hopefully. Hey, wait, um, could you get us down a smidge? Like, just a smidge. Big smidge, though. Thanks. Sorry, there's this operator here. It took us a bit too high. What I was saying is that if you and your hopefully future fiancé end up having children, you couldn't possibly imagine them getting separated from you by the government, right? <laughs> well, I don't know if you will have children after this. Hey, can you get down? Well, you have to have some control over it, otherwise I wouldn't be paying you. Sorry, this guy. He says a hot air balloon isn't a car. I can't just drive it down. Can you believe him? Are you proposing right now? No, no, no. Test flight. My girlfriend's scared of heights, so I wanted to uh, make sure we didn't get too hot. Oh, oh, no. Get me down. Get me down. I don't care if you need to set the thing on fire. Get me down. I was using a metaphor. Do you know what a metaphor is? Sorry. You shouldn't have to hear this. This guy is just not cooperating. Sir, I just want to know if you're voting for Joe Biden and if you have a plan to vote so I can move on. What, you're going to leave me with him? He's crazy. Sir, this is his job. I'm sure you're completely safe. Yeah, but he has this evil glint. Yeah, I know you're like two feet away from me. This evil glint in his eyes. I think he's a Republican. So you are voting for Joe Biden? Yes. That's good. Oh, you're helping us build back better. Do you have a plan to vote? If I tell you, will you leave me? No. Okay, in that case, do you think it was a good idea to propose up here? Like, my girlfriend is scared of heights, and we have only been dating for a few months, but I felt it. What if she says no? What should I do then? Well, I would ask her if she has a plan to vote. There are so many different ways to vote, like in person or by mail, but you gotta register. Oh, come on. Sir, I have other calls to get to. Oh, so you care more about your little election than my emotional needs? I'm going to hang up. No, no, don't go. I have a plan to vote. Hello? Hi, I'm Trish, a volunteer with the Pennsylvania Democrats. Are you planning on voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris this year? I'm an independent. Okay. There have been 200,000 COVID deaths. That's more number-wise and per capita Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. You sound young. Yeah? How old are you? Nineteen. Oh, I'm so sorry. What? It's just you're too young to know. Know what? Life. Well, I just want to know if you have a plan to vote. You're into politics? Thought so. I think I know you. I really don't think you do. Well, I don't know you, but I know you. You're naive. You were never into politics before. It always seemed trivial. Then you turned 18. You went to college. Pennsylvania State. All on your own. Oh, you must have been so scared. Suddenly, politics was real. And so you decided you wanted to try to make a change. How quaint. You've decided to sign up for phone banking after your college handed out flyers. You're calling me on a Samsung Galaxy Prism Cube Blue phone. And right now you're thinking about what you'll tell your best friend Emily about the man who read you like a children's book. Am I wrong? Yeah. You want to know how I know it? 
It, no, thank you. It's simple, really. Pennsylvania State is the most populated college in Pennsylvania. Galaxy phones are the most popular phone in America. Prism Q Blue is the most popular color. And most people phone bank with a friend. You most likely someone your age and gender. And in 2001, 19 years ago, do you want to know what the most popular female baby name in Pennsylvania was? You want to know, Trish? It was Emily. Sir, if you weren't planning on voting for Joe, I have other calls to do. But I'm undecided. I'm an independent. Okay. Just last week, Trump insulted Dr. Fauci. You want to know how I know the essence of you? Sir. It's because I was you 10 years ago. I was just as naive. <laughs> I'm not naive. I also don't think I know a single Emily, and I can't meet any new Emilys because I've been stuck in my house for almost a year. This, that also means I'm missing college. Prism Q Blue Samsung. I'm calling you on my computer. You know, they say the first stage of grief is denial. And knowing that someone could read you so easily could make you a very sad person. So... Oh my god, you're right! Uh-huh. I was in denial. Really? Yes! I'm in my Penn State dorm right now, and Emily is in the other room. Say hi, Emily. Mm, she's probably making other calls. I knew it. You did. You are so smart. I personally prefer the word intelligent. How could you read me so well? I have been practicing on all the telemarketers that call. They're never in denial. Say I'm correct right away. Probably less naive than you. Yeah. You know, a smart person like you should know who to vote for. Oh, I don't vote. Why not? I'm an independent. Hello? Hi, I'm Trish, a volunteer with the Pennsylvania Democrats. Are you planning? Listen, I would love to talk about this right now, but a flaming hot air balloon just crashed right into our yard. Honey, get the, the fire extinguisher. Oh. oh my God, they're alive. I need to go. I have to help. Oh, oh of course, I completely understand. Uh, talk to you later. Hello? Uh, hi, I'm Trish, a volunteer with the Pennsylvania Democrats. Are you planning on voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris this year? Man, you sound like you're having the same Monday I'm having. It's not Monday. I saw something kind of like that in Spain. Have you ever been to Spain? You know, I can't say I have. Damn, you're good. If, if I had two spoons, right, and I got two more... Ma'am, I don't have the time. I'm just interested in who you're voting for. So if whoever I'm voting for had two spoons and then got two more and then another three, what color would the spoons be? It does not matter. What's your favorite part about Pennsylvania? I can't deal with this. If someone says they lost their marbles, do they mean that in a literal sense? I'm going to hang up. Because your programming can't handle me? My what? Your programming. You haven't caught on to me, haven't caught on to you being a robot? I'm not a robot. But that's exactly what a robot would say. Or a human. Don't turn this on me. There was this robot at GoogleCon last year, and it talked just like a human. Like, oh, um, I just um, wanted to order a haircut at this time. Mm-hmm. And it was freaky. Why would I be a robot? If Biden doesn't have enough phone bankers, plus in the Google video, the robot sounds like a human that doesn't really sound like a human, a fake human, just like you when you said you were a Trish in Pennsylvania or whatever. So I had to test you. I don't sound fake. I'm a volunteer. I wanted to do something because my grandparents think the queue is real and COVID is fake and I don't want them to die. But all I've gotten is deranged people like you holding your vote to hostage like the world's most brain-dead terrorist organization. So I do not care about you. I do not care about your vote or your spoons. I'm sorry, ma'am. This isn't what the Biden campaign represents. You're not a robot? No! Oh, in that case, I'm sorry. I didn't think you were human, so. No, it, it's fine. Oh, I'll probably vote for Joe Biden, by the way. Good, that's good. You need a plan, and you need a plan to vote, damn it. Hi, I'm Trish. I volunteer with the Pennsylvania Democrats. Are you planning on voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris this year? Are you okay? Well, 
I'm sure you're doing fine. Doing good, not just fine. What's going on with you? I'm just having a really bad day. I, I had one nice old lady that I helped her find her polling place and then right into a crazy man in a hot air balloon. Her polling place was a crazy man in a hot air balloon? Uh, no, no. A hot air balloon was a different call. Oh. So, who are you voting for? Oh, I don't live in Pennsylvania anymore. I moved pretty recently, actually. I probably should have stayed for the election, but... Oh, no, it's fine. I don't actually live here either. I act like I do because I don't want to be seen as, like, a coastal elite, but no use phone baking in California, you know? You pretend to be Pennsylvanian? No, I never say I'm from Pennsylvania. I just don't correct people if they assume. Coolio. Coolio? Isn't that what the kids say? I don't think so. Well, I don't know. I feel like I've heard Emily say that. Emily, my daughter. When was your daughter born? 2001. Huh. Why? Oh, no reason. I should get going. You don't have to. I, I mean, you can if you want, but... Uh, no, no, no. I mean, I can stay. Thanks. It's just, I'll be put through to the next caller immediately, and I have other calls to get to, and I, I don't want to get to them. Okay, that's fair. Coolio. Coolio. Do you like this TV program, or do you want me to switch the channel? Yes, the birds are lovely, aren't they? Yes, they are, but <laughs> this is a documentary about lions in Africa. Oh, how I love the birds. Believe me, I know. Okay, we're going to stick to the lion documentary. I want to know everything about all the different birds. I want to be a bird. Okay, just just watch the TV program. I need to get some work done. When I grow up, I want to be a bird lady. Yes, an ornithologist. That was your career of 30 years. Ornithologist. That's what I want to be. Well, you accomplished your dream. Can I please get the bird encyclopedia? It has all the different types of birds in it. It's right there on the bookshelf over there. You're perfectly capable of getting it yourself. I will do all the chores you want me to do. I'll wash the dishes and the clothes. I'll clean the entire house. Oh, please. Jesus Christ! Mom! Fine! I'm stopping my work to get up and walk ten feet to get your fucking bird book! I don't understand why you're doing this to me. You're my mom, but you act like a fucking child! Come on, Mom! I need you here for me. Please, just don't do this. <sighs> Let's see. Birds of the World. A detailed visual reference guide to 1,600 birds and their habitats, shown in more than 1,800 pictures. whoop de fucking do How exciting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Look, Tony. Do you see all the different colored feathers on that bird? The birds are lovely, aren't they? Yes, they are. Oh, how I love the birds. You've always been fond of them. I knew you wouldn't let us skip this exhibit. I want to know everything about all the different birds. I want to be a bird. Okay, Tony. I'll see what I can do about that one. When I grow up, I want to be a bird lady. You know, another name for a bird lady is an ornithologist. It's a person who studies birds. Ornithologist. That's what I want to be! Tony, you can accomplish anything if you set your mind to it. You'll be the best ornithologist the world has ever known! Yeah! When I grow up, I'll travel the world and study birds in every country. I'll even discover a new species! Can I please get the bird encyclopedia? It has all the different types of birds in it. No, we don't need to buy that. You can try to find it at the library. I will do all the chores you want me to do. I'll wash the dishes and the clothes. I'll clean the entire house. Oh, please. Let me see the book. This is quite expensive. Let's see. Birds of the World, a detailed visual reference guide to 1,600 birds and their habitats, shown in more than 1,800 pictures. This does look exciting, doesn't it? All right. All right, we can buy it. But this is a one-time thing, and you still have to do all those chores, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. 
How are you feeling today? Mom? Yes, you are my mom. Oh, mom. Okay, I can be your mom. That's fine. Do you know why today is such a special day? Today is your birthday. You're 86 years young. Birthday? Happy birthday, mom. I love you. Okay. I got you a very special gift. Do you want to open it now? Okay. I'll go get your present for my room. I'll be right back. Here it is. Oh, I'm so excited for you to open it. I know you're going to love this one. Look, now you have your very own birds. There's a dove, a bluebird, an owl, and I don't even know the names of all of them, but I'm sure you could help me identify them with your encyclopedia. Do you want to hear the coolest part? A dove is for love, and I love you. They all have authentic bird sounds that were provided by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Where you went to grad school, when I saw these, I felt like you were meant to have them, and they were practically made for you. Why are you giving me a present? Because it's your birthday, Mom. Oh, is it? Do you like the birds? I don't know very much about birds, but I like the sounds they make. I like the owl. It is calling to me. It's calling my name. Mom, there's so many other birds that you haven't seen yet. Here's a hummingbird. And a woodpecker. Oh, this one's cool. Look, it's an eagle. No, those birds aren't calling to me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> the owl calls to me. Yes, the owl calls to me. Double espresso. Uh, yes, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Johnny. Wow. Linda? Hi. Oh my god. Uh, hi. How are you? Um, how have you been? I'm okay. I've I've been okay. Do you want to sit or? Oh, actually, I should get going. Oh, okay. Okay. Or I can stay if you want. No, no, no. You don't have to. I know. I want to. Okay. Oh, sorry. Let me just move these. I hear. I can just take the. Oh, that's fine. I got it. Face and sound. Oh, wow. Made a wool? Fancy. Oh, yeah. It's really coming down out there. Gotta keep the hands warm. <laughs> uh, so, how have you been? I've been... And I've already asked that. Oh, sorry. Continue. I was just gonna say, I've been okay. Yes, you already asked me that, but um, I haven't asked you that. So I guess I'll ask now. <laughs> How have you been? I've been good. Things are good with work. How's Martha? Oh, um, Martha's good. That's good. It's good. Martha's good. Um, she's still working at craft company. Yes, or... craft company. She's still working there. She actually got promoted recently. Oh wow, that's great. So you're both really happy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're thinking about adopting a puppy. Oh, wow. Big step. Yes, big step. Well, I mean, not that big. It's not a kid. No, it's not a kid. A kid would be nice. Yes. A kid would be nice. Wow. Totally new Johnny. I've always wanted a kid. <laughs> not at all how I remember it. You wanted to travel, nothing to tie you down. Well, I guess people change. Yes. Guess they do. Martha's tying you down. Uh, how, how are your parents? Great. Great. Uh, well, actually not great. My, um, 
mom died a couple months ago, and that was really hard. Is really hard. I'm so sorry. Janet was a wonderful woman. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. She was... That's okay. You don't have to say anything. It's just... You know, you just asked, so I told you, and... No, no, I should. I'm sorry. She was... A wonderful woman. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Soy latte. Uh, coffee here is really good. The best. I always come here. Really? I've never seen you here before. I usually come really early. You know, it's not as crowded, and... I don't know, there's something really peaceful about an empty coffee shop. I can imagine. Maybe I'll come join you one day. That'd be nice. I... uh... lied. Sorry? Well, you're gonna find out eventually, so might as well tell you now. Martha and I broke up. Wh what? Yeah, sorry. We talked about her earlier, and I didn't tell you, and I thought I should tell you. Oh. Yeah. So, all that stuff about a puppy... Yeah, we're not getting a puppy. Well, I might, but not her and me. Not together. We aren't getting anything together, because we, uh... Because we broke up. Right. Guess you really haven't changed at all. <laughs> well, thank you for telling me. I just thought you should know. Yes, I... Uh, yes. So, all that stuff about wanting a kid. I was telling the truth. I've always wanted a kid. Yeah, me too. How come you didn't come early this morning? Huh? Uh, you said you usually come here early, so why didn't you come here early today? I did. I guess I just stayed a little longer than usual. Because of that? Oh, well, yes and no. I'm a little scared to drive away with the storm outside, but yeah, it's a really good book. Well, it must be to have kept you captive for all these hours. Yes, well, I've turned over a new leaf. Yeah? I've stopped ending books the second I get bored. I find that if you stick it out, they actually kind of get better as they go on, which of course people knew, which is why there are so many popular books that, that I hated and everyone else loved, but I just had to learn to read them all the way through and then they would actually get good. It's pretty cool. Well, I'm glad you've rediscovered yourself. <laughs> I wouldn't call it that. It's kind of- Well, I like should be going. Discovering. Oh. Really? Yeah. But it's been nice talking to you, Linda. Yeah. You too. See? Safe and sound. <laughs> Good thing. Gotta keep the fancy wool safe. <laughs> safe and sound. Oh shit. Shit. Johnny! Johnny! Johnny. Thank god I caught you. You forgot your glove. Oh! Thanks. For the glove, I mean. Thanks for the glove. No problem. Goodbye, Lynn. Wait. Johnny. Yeah? Um... Just let me know if you ever get around to getting that puppy. <laughs> I will. Apparently they're a lot of work, so I could use the help. Yeah, they are. They're a big responsibility. I think I'm ready. It's gonna tie you down. Yeah, well... Johnny. Yeah? Um... Nothing. Nothing, just... Good luck. Good luck? With the dog! With the life and the maybe kid! Right. Yeah, the dog. Yeah, the dog. Okay, if there's nothing else... What? Nothing. Never mind. Oh, okay. I'll see you around, yeah?
Goodbye, Johnny. Decaf latte. Did you hear that noise? What noise? Sounded like something is in the alley. I'm gonna go check outside. See, I told you there was nothing outside. I swear I heard a noise. And did you see the shadow by the back fence? I heard that. It was probably just the wind outside. Plus, I saw a cat in the yard yesterday. Maybe it came back looking for shelter from the storm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it just sounded like something heavy fell outside. It's fine. Let's just watch a movie. <sighs> okay, you're probably right about the noise, but I get to choose the movie this time. No, you chose last time. It's my turn. And I'm not sitting through another one of your stupid sci-fi movies again. Fine. But for the record, I think you are cheating. So it should be noted that I'm a good person for letting you choose the movie, even though it's obviously my turn. No, it's my turn. Last time you chose that alien one, remember? I couldn't possibly know what you're talking about. <sighs> what was that? What was what? Your voice. It got high. You always raise your voice when you lie. Fine. You choose. Want popcorn? Sure. Uh, can you put the seasoning I like on it? It's in the left-hand drawer by the... Did you hear... Uh, what? The thumping noise. It sounded like it was coming from the office. I didn't hear anything. It sounded like something fell over. Is Duke here? No, I gave Duke back, Duke back to my mom just earlier today. Thank God she's back from her trip. If I had to take him for another walk at 5 a.m. again, I would have taken him back to the pound. Tell me you hear that. You are just being delusional. I will go and check and prove to you that there's nothing there. See? Look. There's nothing. Can you please stop with this act already? What act? You're pretending to hear something just to scare me. It's not funny anymore. No, I genuinely hear something. Listen. Stop! Listen. You're not listening to me. I know the noise is real. It's a thumping noise. I swear, it has been the loudest all day today and yesterday, and I can't figure out where it is coming from. No, I don't hear it. Can we please just get back to the movie now? Uh, okay. But tell me you hear it too. Yeah, I hear it. Really? No, I just want you to shut up about it. It's not there. Nothing is there. Hmm. How does Goodfellas sound for tonight? Levi, how does Goodfellas sound? Levi! What? I was talking to you. The least you could do is respond. What do you think of Goodfellas for tonight? Yeah, sounds good. Is the dryer running? No. Huh. Funny, I hear the thumping again. Now that I heard. It's just so weird. I swear, something is off. <sighs> Levi, can you just drop it? If this is a trick you're trying to play on me, it's not funny. There's nothing to drop because this is real. That noise is real. Tell me you hear it too. I don't hear it. What has been up with you lately? First you thought you hear Duke and the dryer, none of which I hear too. Can you please just act like an adult for a second? I am acting like an adult. I am telling you, I think that there is something wrong. Isn't that what an adult would do? An adult would deal with it themselves. They wouldn't make their girlfriend deal with it. I'm not doing that. I'm telling you, something is wrong. That is exactly what you're doing. I thought we talked about this. You told me you wanted to be more responsible and start seriously thinking about our future. About kids. Don't bring future kids into this situation. You know that that is not fair when you is do that. Is this what it's going to be like when we have kids? I mean, because lately you've been acting a lot like a child that I have to take care of. You know, when we have kids, adults don't get to be the children. You're too old to be a child. Grow up. I can't raise a child if I'm raising you too. <sighs> I was going to wait to tell you this, but I'm going to take Sylvie in for a while. What? How long? She needs a place to stay for a year or two, maybe longer. And I told my brother I would look after her. Why can't someone else do it? Because we don't have any other family members, and it was either that or foster care. If that's going to be your attitude, then what do you think it's going to be like when we have children? You didn't even discuss it with me. Of course I didn't discuss it with you, because it was my decision to make, not ours. But this is my life too, so what do you expect me to do? Pick her up from school and stuff? No, I don't. She's my responsibility, but I thought it might be good practice for us, since you always say we want kids. 
but I have a life and I can't just drop everything. You know what? Never mind. I don't know why I thought you might want to help. Of course you don't. You never want to. Can you stop doing What this? am I doing? The thing you always do, accusing me of being a child and not trusting me with anything. Or redoing and criticizing all the things I do. <laughs> well, you haven't really given me a reason to trust you and you do everything wrong because you never listen to me when I ask you to do something. I don't have the same amount of hours to waste in the day that you do. Then what the fuck are we still doing here in this relationship? You know what? That's a great question. Maybe you should leave. What? Maybe we should break up. I mean, I am going to have my hands full taking care of Sylvie, and since you're not going to help, maybe you should go. But this is my house, too. <laughs> Excuse me? What did you say? You can't kick me out of my own house. This is my house. I pay for it. I pay for everything and you don't even have a fucking job right now. And by the way, when are you getting a job? You said last month, two months ago. Have you found anything yet? Are all the jobs taken? Okay. So you're just gonna ignore me? Shh. Don't, don't shush me. Do you hear thumping? It is so loud. How can you not hear it? <sighs> no, because... We're over. I don't know what else to do. I'm gonna go to sleep right now, and tomorrow when I wake up, you better not be here. You don't mean that? I know you don't mean that, do you? I mean it! So, that's it? You're breaking up with me because I'm hearing noises? The fact that you're more concerned with wanting me to believe you about the noises instead of me breaking up with you tells me all I need to know. I know you think I'm lying, but I think there is something seriously wrong with me. Come on, you work in hospital administration. I don't... I I know I haven't given you any reason for you to trust me in the ca past couple of months, but please believe me that I want to make this work. I need you to believe me because if you don't, then nobody will. Make it stop. Please just make the sound stop. I just want to stop. Freya, please help me make it stop. I want the silence again. I promise this is real. I'm not making it up, Freya. Please, the noise didn't just start. I have been hearing. Uh, okay. Do you have any questions? So what can be done? Can it be treated? We can try a few things, but there's no guarantee that they will work. So if it doesn't work, then what? Unfortunately, you may just have to learn to live with it. Like permanently? I'm very sorry, but it becomes more manageable as time goes on. I would suggest you schedule an appointment with an ENT. Uh, if you could just wait a minute, I can go get you a list of ones that take your insurance. Thank you. Of course. So the things you said earlier about me moving... Uh, we'll see. We'll talk about it later. I feel like the flash, bro! That was the fastest we've ever gone! You were zooming, but I was barely behind you, bro. Check out all these broken bottles, Marcos. We could start a bar fight down here. I wonder who was here. They didn't clean up after themselves. Who trashed our forest? Yeah, man, really. We should go find them and beat them up. What's this? Let me see. Ew, it's bloody! And what is this? Dude, put that down. That's a condom. Ugh. Why do you keep touching everything you see, bro? Don't worry about it. The five second rule is a real thing. But that's only for food. Shut up. It was only for a second. Just like the second I saw my sister in the shower. Bro, why would you want to see your sister in the shower? I, I don't know, man. Well, I saw strippers in the window of the club yesterday. No way, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, it's getting dark. Let's head back. When we come out tomorrow, I'll try to grab one of my dad's cigarettes. Okay, okay, deal. Let's hope all this nasty stuff is gone by tomorrow. What's that strange noise nearby? Let me see. It's the only time I come here by myself. What? What the actual frig is that? It sounds like someone. Maybe behind this bush? Oh. Oh, God. What the hell is that? What is happening? Are they on the floor? That can't be healthy. Oh shit, she's looking at me. I gotta get out of here. Holy crap, wait till Oliver hears about this. Where's my bike? Where did I put it? Uh, by the bushes. Okay, I'm out of here. Peace. 
Dude, I saw people having sex in the woods. It was weird, but hilarious. They were in the woods? Like, just in the dirt? Nope, all naked, getting dirty. Elvis, come here, listen to this. You ever seen people having sex? Just my parents, unfortunately. I saw people having sex in the woods yesterday in the dirt like bears. That's how you get crabs. Did you know them? No clue. I barely saw them, and then the girl saw me, and I biked away. So... What exactly were they doing, though? Having sex. Yeah. But, like, where does he put his penis? In her butt. I think that's what you do. I don't know if that's right. I thought it goes in the vagina or something. Nah, man. I saw her butt, and that's what I think happened. Liam, get over here. Marcos knows what sex is. Bro, you know what sex is? Yeah, man. It's when you put a penis in a butt. But what if someone has to pee or poo? Hey, David, sex is when you put a penis in a butt. Gee, man, thanks for telling me. I'll let people know if they ask me. David, I heard some very disturbing information on the PTA message boards about you being vulgar at school. What do you think happened? I don't know, Mr. PP. Don't call me that. My name is Peters. David, you can't go around campus talking about butts. Oh, yeah, when I was telling people about sex. What's bad about that? I can't be having you talk about genitalia with other students. I thought you knew better. Well, I didn't even see the people having sex. That was Marcos, and he told me. Oh, did he now? David, I don't want to hear any more about butts coming from your mouth. You hear? Yeah, Mr. PP. You know where he might be? Probably kickball? Marcos, can you step over here for a minute? I've got to talk to you. Hold up, I'm about to kick. Shit! That's what I'm trying to get you to notice, Marcos. You have a foul mouth. Now come here. Ooh, teacher! teacher. Sorry, Mr. P. I've heard from other students and their parents that you've been talking about sex a lot. Is that true? Yeah, so, it's when you put a penis in a butt, and that's pretty gross. Well, kind of. Doesn't matter. All that matters is that you clean up your act and stop being inappropriate. I don't want to hear any other complaints. On top of that, you'll have to write a letter of apology to the PTA director. So, what should I write, Oliver? What are they mad about again? Exactly. I don't know what to apologize for. What's wrong with sex? I mean, isn't it what everyone does and it's in songs and movies? Why can't I teach David about it? My cousin has this thing called sex ed and he's a fifth grader so he knows what he's talking about. What's ed? I don't know. Hmm. Aren't the PTA in charge of things at school? I don't know. I'll just write and ask them why we can't have a sex ed class. Bro, that doesn't get you out of trouble, though. What do I say, then? Blame them for scapegoating you. What is a scapegoat? It's when you pin something on someone just to get rid of the problem. But that's not going to work because that's not what happened. I'm just going to ask if we can have a sex ed class. It seems smart, and I trust the fifth grader. Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. My cousin isn't smart. Whatever, bro. I want to get to the forest. I bet Elvis is already there. I'm just going to write this later. Hey, you should become a pediatrician since you like the look of children's hospitals. The ones that smell like soap and have colorful posters all over. <laughs> That's the worst idea ever. What if you went to clown school? It might be an undiscovered talent. Okay, that one's worse. <laughs> Hey Liz, you should search up the top five most easy, high-paying careers. Or maybe search top ten, in case most are illegal. Can you be quiet for a bit? I'm trying to concentrate on the survey. I need to finish it before class starts and I only have... One minute. One minute? Oh, wow, close one. Now if Zoom would just hurry up and load... Hey Liz, how have you been? I'm okay. You know. Oh, I feel that. It's like I've fallen in love with my room again during quarantine. I spent all my time here. Yeah, totally. Totally not what you meant. 
Anyway, Mr. H separated us into groups, said something about an end of the semester project. Oh yeah, I remember hearing about that. A few months ago, Mr. H told me that we'd be making a short film in any genre. We can make our own soundtrack. We're even allowed to include other people as long as we keep our masks on. It can be any topic or style. Wow, slow down, try hard. You're literally ranting. But yeah, I don't know. It was months ago. I don't remember much. Actually, I think that's the one. Got any ideas? So now you're going to tell her that you've been wanting to make an informative documentary on COVID. Could you be any more boring? I can already hear the conversation she's going to be having with her friends about you. Nope, I don't have any. Well, that's okay. I don't really have any either. We have until next class. Maybe we can mute and think about it for now. Yeah, I'm sure you'll come up with lots of great ideas. Bye. Later. I'm sure you'll come up with lots of great ideas. How bad was it? I said lay off her, not slack off. You sound like you're leaving everything to her. Oh, what did I say? Basically, you said blah blah cameras, blah blah music. Here's all the requirements. Now tell me when you're done with the work. You're being that group member. No one likes that group member. Oh god. I wanted to make a good impression since she's going to be my project partner for three months. Well, she already hates you. She's probably trying to switch partners right now. Maybe I should text her. Clear things up. Where's my phone? If you text her, you'll probably just make things worse. What makes you think she'll want to speak with you, Ed? Hey, Liz. How's it going? Brainstorming on my own isn't working. Any updates? Oh, I haven't had any ideas yet. Well, I was thinking we could make a doc about quarantine. Oh my god, I had the same idea. You you just contradicted yourself. Red alert, say something quick. Oh, I mean, I didn't think of sharing it. Not that. I said that I hadn't had any ideas because it was just a passing thought, but I had totally, completely forgotten about. Shoot, my little brother just dropped a glass. I'll be right back. Oh, okay, bye. Now you've really done it. You don't just sound stupid, you sound clinically crazy. I told you if you mentioned your project, it would flop. I know, I know. It's a wonder your friends can stand you. Well, maybe they can't. That would explain why they haven't texted you since in-person school. Oh gosh, you're right. It's only a matter of time before everyone realizes how much of a bumbling idiot you are. Maybe you really should just leave the work to Chloe. Maybe then you won't have the opportunity to fail. You're right. I don't want to mess this up. But I've gotten better at filming. How do you know it would go badly? Well, how do you know it would go well? For every task, there are a billion mistakes waiting to happen. Every time you leave your house, talk to somebody, pick up your camera. That's why I'm here to protect you. So listen to me. Trust me. Liz, you need me. I know. I know I do. Sorry. But I'm getting tired of your constant warnings and of playing it safe. Why are you here all the time? I used to barely ever hear you. Yeah, until your iMovie music video got shared around your middle school. You remember that? Yeah, like you'd let me forget. Hey, can't you just let it go already? I'm sure everyone else has. Why can't you? Because I don't want that to happen again. I'm here to help you. The world is scary and people are judgmental. They're just waiting for you to make one of those billion mistakes so they can share it with their friends and laugh. And for years, no one will look at you without seeing your embarrassing little video. Now, you want a sequel to the iMovie incident? You want to lose the reputation you took so long to fix? Stop. The friends that you try so hard to keep? Stop! That's enough! Get out of my head, you son um, of a- Liz, your microphone's on. Oh. Um, I'm- I'm on a phone call. With who? What are they saying to you? Uh, n nothing. I hung up. Sounds like that was the right thing to do. Things were getting pretty escalated there. Yeah. Look, I know this is none of my business, but I've had friends like that. It might seem like they want to better you or whatever they choose to call it, but 
That's not how friendship should be. Well, we're not really like that. It's different. How? Well, it's kind of deeper than friendship. So you two are pretty codependent? I guess you could say that. <laughs> Shit, who am I to tell you to cut off a friend? F forget what I said. No, no, Chloe, I appreciate this. I've actually been wanting to get something off my chest. Don't do it, Liz. You'll embarrass us. So what should I do if my friend tells me to stay away from people because they hate me? I would say don't believe everything they tell you. What have your friends done to make you think they dislike you? Mm. I'm not sure. I can't really think of anything. Sounds like textbook manipulation to me. What about that one camping trip? Actually, this one time I went camping with a group of friends, and on the last day, Lexi didn't speak to me that much. So, therefore, Lexi hates you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now that I'm saying it out loud, it doesn't make any sense. But if I was to tell my friend off, how would I do it? Pretend they're here with us right now. What? No. Okay. Hey, you. Uh. Uh, Becky. Becky, leave Liz alone. Stop making her feel bad. Yeah. Stop lying to me, Becky. Why would I lie to you? I'm literally a part of you. You have no real reasons to make me feel bad about what I do. I do, and you should feel bad. Admit you're wrong. No. Admit it. Fine. I guess sometimes I exaggerate. I don't mean to. Now can you stop? You're making a fool of yourself. Becky, I trusted you. No! Beat her ass! This is for discouraging me from making the videos I want. Boom! And this one is for constantly reminding me of my insignificant mistakes. Boom! I hate you! You're right. You help me sometimes, but most times you're wrong, and I should just ignore you. I should be the one to keep you in check because you're the one making the mistakes. Since you like reminding me of my faults, here are yours. You're too possessive and blow everything out of proportion. I'm overholding myself back. I mean, Becky, I need to set some boundaries. Wow, you really got into it. Nice. Yeah. How was that? <laughs> Honestly, a little weird. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Hey, whatever helps. Good luck with your friend. Don't let her get the best of you. Thanks. And thanks for the advice. No problem. And um, before class ends, what day are you free to meet up and plan our project? Never. How's today? What? Sure, let's do it. Becky? Really? You could have given me any name. Why are you making me sound like this? You're only in my head. I can give you any voice I want. Why? Because <laughs> it's funny. It suits you. And I have a new friend. She's hardly a friend. You know nothing about her. And wait till she gets to know you. I have three whole months for that. And I'm feeling optimistic about it. You know what? I think I'll text her right now. No way! It was going good between you! Why would you jeopardize- Hey! Turn that music down! I'm speaking to you! I can't hear you! No! Uh, you can't do that! I just passed go! But I'm the banker. You need to wait till I give it to you. All right, fine. Just let her. If she wants to be the banker, let her be the banker. It's not the end of the world. I am. I am. It's 200 for pass and go. The bank is taking 100 because you tried stealing. Molly. Okay, good. Now it's my turn. Wait. No, he landed on Baltic Avenue. He owes me money. Of course. How much do I owe you? Um, Four dollars, please. Geez, Sharon. Looks like we have a little business lady on our hands. May I start now? Thank you. Yes, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Put your piece down. How much do I owe you this time? 
Um, let me check. Why does it feel like you own half the board? Since I have a house here, you owe me $175, please. Okay, my turn. Four and four, um, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <gasps> Are you going to buy it, Molly? Nope. It's the best property. Why wouldn't you want it? You could win. I don't want it. Very well, then. I'll take it. We are going to have an auction for it. Come on, Sharon. Just let me have this one. I can't. Then you would have both blues. I bid 400. 450. Don't do this, Sharon. 500. Quit it. Uh, 600. 650. 700. You don't have 700. I'll find a way. I'll, I'll mortgage a few properties. Just give it to me. Uh, how much should I go with these? Um, I don't think you have enough, even with the, the mortgages. Mortgages. Sharon, let me have it. Honey. It's all I want. You're willing to go broke over a property? It's more than that. Can't you see, Sharon? She's about to win. It's a game. This game is supposed to be fun. Daddy, it's just a property. You can always buy it back from her whenever you want. What if I can't? What if I end up selling all my properties in order to pay for landing on your Baltic avenues or your mother's park places or any of the four railroads you own? Then what? I'm left with just nothing? Broke? Ten dollars in the bank? Hun, it's okay, Daddy. It's only a game. It's not real money. You're right, sweetie. But what if I don't want to lose this game? What if I, for example, really, really like this one property and spend all of my money, everything I've earned on this property, in hopes that I can win me the game? Then, for example, I'm left with the decision of selling the property or losing the game, then what? Is it worth losing if I still have the property? Or should I sell it in order to barely stay afloat in the game? You know what? Fine. Here, take it. Maybe if you were a little more responsible with how you spent your money in the beginning, you wouldn't be having the problems you have now. Dad. Aaron, you can have it. At the end of the day, it's just a card. Oh, just what I needed. How much is it this time? Um, $120. What? Hey, hon. Um, I forgot to ask you. Okay, your turn, Mommy. Chris? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember that thing? Ha <laughs> ha, now you owe me money. That will be $100. Here. Remember that thing we talked about last week? That thing? The money. Oh. You took it out, right? Yeah, okay. Molly, it's your turn. Eight. Ha, I'll buy it. Chris? No. How much? $300. You took out the money, right? I don't have enough. You can sell your properties. I don't want to. How much were you able to take out from the Bitcoin? I thought you didn't want to lose. You did take out the money, right? Come on, Daddy. Fine. I'll mortgage this property. It's worth 200 There. Paid in full. I still have another turn. I rolled doubles. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. I'll buy it. I'm going to ask you one more time. Did you buy back the Bitcoin you were saving? It's important, Chris. What happened? What's what's wrong? Answer my question. No, I, I didn't. Mommy, it's your turn. I knew it. How much? 60. Haha, <laughs> yes! You're a child. Come on, Sharon. Let's have a little fun. We can talk about money later. You're just happy you're not losing anymore. No! Uh... Ha. Pay up. Chris, we need to pay our utilities bill, and frankly, I don't know what else to get the money from. We need to wait till it goes back up. Haha, <laughs> that's 200 for pass and go. Our, our Bitcoin is down bad right now. If we took it out, we'd be losing a lot of money. You always said you would take it out when we need it most. We need it right now. Oh, yeah. I'll buy it. How much would we be losing anyways? How? I keep landing on your properties. It's 200. But really, 
How much should we lose? Come on. Let's just play the game and we can worry about it later. Anyways, it might go back up if we wait long enough. We don't have time to wait. We have to pay everything by tomorrow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No! Haha, <laughs> that's another 200. Chris, we need this money. Can you please take out whatever we have before it goes down anymore? There's no point in taking it out, Sharon. What do you mean? We don't have much and we can't do much else but wait. It's okay, we'll get through it, we always have. It'll be like college again. Remember when we were able to take care of Molly in that small apartment by campus? We can always move out of this house, back into an apartment if necessary. Let's at least make this work. So what if we can't play utilities? We can still play Monopoly in the dark while eating McDonald's. We've always made it work. It'll only be for a couple days until I get my next paycheck, and we can pay this bill. Cheer up. We can always play Monopoly today and worry about everything tomorrow. Daddy? Daddy, it's your turn. Daddy? Ralji, did you get into the mainframe? Almost done. All right, it says here that the U.S. nuclear launch codes are in the basement of Delta Psi Beta. Wait, you mean here on campus? I guess so. But why would the U.S. store nuclear launch codes in a fraternity basement? I have no idea. Oh, wait, isn't one of the fraternity brothers the stepson of the president's secretary? Oh, you mean Trevor from Physics 120? Yeah, that guy. Maybe the vice president gave the launch codes to Trevor, because the frat house is the last place you would look if you were trying to find launch codes. That seems kind of dumb, but I guess it makes sense. So we get the codes and then what? Hey, if Trevor's stepmom is the president's secretary, why don't we get the codes and call his stepmom and try to get some money from them? I like that idea. Wait, Delta Psi is throwing that party tonight. We can get them then. Yeah, but look at us. We're nerds. We're not going to be able to get into a Delta Psi party. Well, I guess it's time to chat up. The fuck? Well, we need the nuclear launch codes if we want to sell them back to the government to pay off our college debt. Mm, fine. Here, put this full send tank top on. What does full send mean? I think there's some YouTubers or something. I don't know, my brother gave it to me, and he's in a frat over in Penn State, so it's probably cool. Alright, whatever. It's getting late, so we should head over. Alright, let's go. Hey Siri, how do you play beer pong? Whoa, this party is insane. I don't really want to go in. I know, just stay low-key. What does that mean? It means be chill. I looked it up on Urban Dictionary. Smart. All right, ready to go in? Let's go, just you do the talking. All right, just remember the plan. We get in and find the basement where the launch codes are. They should be in some safe or something. Yo, Brock, can I help you? Yeah, we'd like two tickets to the party, please. You want what? Hold up. <laughs> Trevor, Brock, get a load of these bozos. Holy fuck, you guys are my physics class, yeah? <laughs> yeah, man. You guys are absolute nerds. The fuck are you doing here, bruh? Just trying to live the full send life, bruh. Uh, whoa. These guys are no joke. I think we should let them in. Yeah, for real, man. Hey, listen up. I'm not supposed to be doing this because we gotta keep a ratio, but you guys seem cool, so I'll let you guys in for $20. Deal, bruh. How did that just work? I'm just smooth, man. Facts, bruh. I can't lie, you're pretty smooth. Yo, look, there's the basement, let's go in. Yo, Ralph G and Alex, get over here, man. I want to introduce you to some chicks. Oh, God. Remember those hockey players from coding camp last year? Yeah. Talk like that. Ladies, I'd like you to meet Ralph G and Alex. Sup. Sup, you absolute dimes. What the fuck is poppin'? Ooh, that's hot. Yeah, I dig that. Holy fuck, Ralph G. I never knew this side of you, bruh. Fuck yeah, buddy. I'm a dump and change kid who knows how to party. Oh yeah, you are, you absolute beauty. <laughs> I'll leave you two to it. And yo, feel free to use any bedroom upstairs. Hey, ladies. We'll go get us some drinks. Okay. Okay. 
Jesus, man, that accent was crazy good. Thanks, man. And hey, quick thinking with the drinks idea. Now we can head down to the basement. Let's go. Bro, look, it's the safe. All right, now the combo. It's three numbers. I, I can't, it can't be that hard to guess. I'll just start messing around until I get it. All right. I, I got it. It's 420. I wonder what that means. Yeah, I have no idea. Maybe it's an area code or something. Yeah, probably. All right, here are the codes. Put them in your pocket. Let's get out of this musty house. There you guys are. How are the chicks? They were some absolute sevens, buddy. Like, fuck, I only go for tens. Oh, shit. My apologies, big dog. Hey, well, I've got you guys here. How would like to come rush our frat? Yeah, maybe. That sounds cool, I guess. As soon as I met you guys, I just felt a connection. Yeah, man. I feel the same way. What's that in your pocket? Oh, it's just, uh, my list of broads I've gotten with. No, that's not. That's the launch codes, you fuckers. Hootie hoo! Hootie hoo! Boys, assemble! Oh, God. What the fuck is he doing? Those losers just tried to steal the nuclear launch codes. Not cool, bro chachos. On three, we run back to the dorm. One, two, three, go! I can't believe how slow. Those frat guys were. I know. They were just too drunk to run. Yeah, for real. All right, let's call up Trevor's mom and see how much she'll pay for these codes. You got her number? Yeah, I found it in the class phone number list. It's 480-872-9145. Hi, who's this? That doesn't matter right now. What matters is that we have the U.S. nuclear launch codes. I'm sorry, what? You heard me. We got them from your son Trevor's frat house. No, no, please. What can I do to get them back? We want $50,000. Okay, okay. Come to the campus quad at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow. And come alone, otherwise we might just tell the news that you stored the U.S. nuclear launch codes in a frat house. Okay, okay, don't worry. I'll come alone. Just please, don't give them away or tell anyone. I could lose my job. Don't worry, we won't. Can't believe that just worked. I know. Let's go. Welcome! Welcome! <coughs> Jesus! <coughs> yeah, it's pretty dense. Give it a few minutes, it'll dissipate. Where... <coughs> Where is this place? Good question. Now how'd you die? Die? Car accident's too flashy. Something more low-key, like maybe a disease? Yeah, I could see that. Am I... am I dead? Why am I here? More good questions. You're definitely younger, so there can't be too much wrong with you. I'm... Wait, wait, wait. Let me guess. You kept to yourself, focused too much on your grades, didn't talk to your grandparents enough, never thanked your parents for anything. How... how do you know all of that? I've been haunting your family for centuries. What? I'm kidding. I was just making an assumption. I guess I was just a little too accurate. Uh, yeah. Come on. Ghost joke. You gotta keep it lighthearted in the afterlife. Things can get a little gloomy. This is all kind of new to me, so if you could reel it back on the jokes. Is that one of your three wishes? My what? You watched Aladdin, right? You know what a genie is? I just said, could you- All right, all right. But you can only silence me for so long. So how did you die? That's a little personal. Ugh, we're both dead. You died, I died. There's no shame in that. You know, I can go first if you'd like. Actually, I have some questions. Ooh, all right. But I am going to circle back to this, though. We have, like, eternity, so we got to keep the conversation going. Uh, sure. Whatever. Um, where is this exactly? Well, we're dead. Yes. So, this is the afterlife. Yeah. Ta-da! No, I meant- No, I know. You want answers, yeah? Yeah. I feel ya. I felt the same way when I first came here. You know, when I died, I actually had to figure this all out on my own. So, you're pretty lucky having someone around like me. 
Okay. I'm just saying, you know, dying can be scary, especially when you're alone, but you don't have to worry about that now that I'm here. No offense, but you don't really seem like the most reliable person. You're very cynical, aren't you? I just want to know where I am. All right. You want a reliable tour guide? I'll give you a reliable tour guide. You see that over there? Uh, no. Look real closely. You see anything? There isn't anything there. Exactly. It's like that for, well, forever in that direction. And every other direction. So we're in some void? My guess is that this is an in-between, you know, a halfway kind of place where a certain type of people are sent until they're ready to move on. And that type is? Well, since I'm here and you're here, that probably means... We have something in common. Now, what could that possibly be? I have a hard time believing we're alike in any way. Come on, we are getting along pretty well so far. How old were you when you died? Um, that's a little personal. Ha ha ha. Age, please. Six. What? Just kidding. Twenty-four. I was twenty-two. Have you met any other ghosts around that age? Mm, I don't think age is the unifying aspect here. It's a start. You've been here for how long? You must have some idea by now. You're pretty keen to leave, aren't you? Aren't you? Do you want to stay in a place like this forever? It's not so bad. It's also not... Uh, anything. No, yeah, like I said, not bad. And how long have you been here exactly? I mean, it's kind of hard to tell with the lack of clocks and whatnot, but... If I had to make a guess, I'd say around 50 years. So you've been around here for 50 years and have never wanted to escape? Not really. It's just mist and quiet here. What's not to like? I don't believe that at all. You've been talking nonstop since I got here, and you want me to believe that you're some quiet introvert whose biggest wish is for some tranquil alone time? A guess is a guest. It would be rude of me not to entertain them with some lively jibber-jabber. I think you were lonely. <laughs> what makes you think that? Your reaction proves I'm right. It does not. So I'm wrong? Well, no, I- Exactly. You're partially right. So you are lonely. I am not lonely. There's just more to why I've been here for so long. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting. I did want to leave at first. Obviously, I mean, who wouldn't? There's like nothing to do or to see, no one to talk to. Just me and my thoughts. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, but that changed the first time I met someone else here. When was that? About 40 years ago. How many people have you met since then? Um, 13, including you. All of them have managed to leave. So there is a way! It is possible. You don't seem too happy about it. Just because it's possible doesn't guarantee it'll happen. Everyone I've met has managed to move on, but I'm always the one left behind. I'm sure sooner or later you'll be picked to go. But how does it work? They just suddenly up and disappear? Out of their control? Who causes it? I suspect it's me. Care to explain? Every person who comes here carries a huge burden with them. It's usually family-related or guilt or self-esteem stuff, but there's been a decent variety. That's why I was so accurate with your issues. I've gotten pretty good at this over the years. You're like a bloodhound for trauma. Yeah, but this stuff people carry around, they're usually so used to it that they don't even realize it's there. So when I notice it, or point it out, I accidentally help them to come to terms with it. I think that release is the catalyst for people to leave. You help them. I don't do it on purpose. It just happens. I think you actually want to help them. If you didn't want them to leave, you wouldn't tell me any of this stuff. Yeah, well, apparently I'm not smart enough to keep my mouth shut. So, why are you here? You don't think you were a good person, or- <laughs> No, not by a long shot. Why? What did you do? You want me to list out everything I failed to do to be a good person? 
we're gonna be here for a while. I mean, literally. Well, we've got time, apparently. All right. I haven't overshared in a couple decades now. Might as well. Why not? You don't have to if you don't want to. Oh, no, no, no. I would love to. Okay. Okay. Buckle in. So I was never satisfied with what I had. You know, I quit more hobbies and jobs than I could count. Never fully committed to a relationship. And Wow. But if I had to pick a singular, most prominent reason for being here, I'm a liar. Oh, come on. What? Everyone lies at some point in their life. Yeah, but that's amateur lying. I'm sure we've all said we had more experiences than we actually did in interviews or assured someone that their outfit looks good when it's actually hideous or told a friend they killed it during a performance when it was bland at best. That stuff doesn't come anywhere near what I did. I'm talking real, high-quality, complex lying. I lied to family, friends, people on the street, people I worked with. I lied to get into places. I lied to get out of things. And sometimes I just lied for fun. Actually, everything I've told you so far has been a lie. And this is actually hell. You're in hell right now. Uh, that was another joke, by the way. <laughs> let me know if they're ever going to start being funny. Judging by your standards, probably won't happen. Mm -hmm. So, I lied so much that no one really actually knew who I was. And after a while, the same went for myself. I had created so many fake versions of myself, I forgot which one was the real me. I feel like I read that in a book somewhere. You probably did, because I saw that quote from a book. Seriously? Okay, the way I explained it wasn't exactly original, but the gist is still there. I do actually lie a lot, and I do think that's what landed me here. Does it really matter whether or not you're telling the truth? What? It's annoying, sure, but... I don't think it's something that you need to punish yourself for, for eternity. Lying and talking too much aren't your only traits. You're not all bad. Accidental or not, you've been helping these people. I think you just needed someone to ask for a change. <laughs> I do talk too much, don't I? Yeah, you do. But I don't mind listening. So, um, is this how it's usually going with the people you talk to? Wait, you- Maybe that wasn't the smartest idea.